Hello photographers, my name is Spiro Seniatis. This is where I answer your photography questions and we learn about photography together. And today I'm going to share with you a bonus video from my Understanding Flash Photography video course. The course is 21 videos, nearly three hours of content that will get you up and running with flash photography. And it will have you shooting photos that you may have never thought you could actually shoot. In the video I'm going to explain and help you understand the often confusing inverse square square law as it relates to photography. And the inverse square law is very important in photography in general, but it's especially important in flash photography. But before I show you that, I wanted to give you an update on a few things that I'm working on that I'm really excited about. First, I'm working on a full series of videos on composition in photography. These videos are going to be a ton of fun and will give you the tools you need to start deliberately composing compelling and unforgettable images. And the first video in that series will be up in two weeks, so stay tuned for that. Second, you've probably noticed this t-shirt I've been wearing in my most recent videos, and I've had a lot of people asking about the shirt, so I've gone ahead and made them available for you. And if you want to get your hands on one of these shirts, just click this annotation right here. You can hop on over and order one. And finally, I'm beginning to work on a brand new video course for beginners photographers. This is going to be a great course. It's going to cover all the fundamental of photography. It's going to show you how to use your DSLR camera. It's going to cover all the popular cameras from Canon, Nikon, Pentax. It's just going to be great. So if you want to be the first to know when that is available, head over to selfhelpphotographer.com and you can sign up to my mailing list there. All right, that's enough of that. So let's get to it. Here is all you need to know about the inverse square law. The inverse square law is one of the great mysteries of photography, but the truth is the inverse square law is actually very easy to understand. What the inverse square law does is describe how light loses power as it travels over distance. And with the inverse square law, we can figure out exactly how much power the light has at any given distance. What's great about this is that the math is actually very simple. In this equation here, P is equal to the power of the light. And to figure out the power of the light, we take the inverse of the distance squared, which as you can see by the formula here, is simply multiplying the distance by itself and turning it into a fraction. So P is equal to one over the distance squared. What that means is when you fire a flash at one foot from the flash, that light is at full power because one squared or one times one is equal to one and one over one is full power. As you remember from when we were shooting manual flash, on the flash the power readings are set in fractions and one over one is full power. At two feet from the light then the power is reduced to one quarter power because two squared or two times two is equal to four and one over four is equal to one quarter power. Now, I'm using the standard measurement unit of a foot in these examples, but this math calculation works using any unit of measurement. This might seem a little confusing until we realize that with the inverse square law, the full power measurement is relative. Whether it's one foot, one meter, one inch, or one centimeter, at one unit of measurement, the reading is always going to be full power. This is because unless you are in the flash, as the light is being generated, there's no such thing thing as a full power reading because the moment the light starts to leave the source of origin it is losing power. So we choose a point at which we're going to start and we call that full power. It doesn't matter if it's a foot, it doesn't matter if it's a meter, as long as it's consistent. The inverse square law is blind to the actual measurement, and the math bears this out no matter what unit of measurement you use. If we start at one foot, as we already know, one times one equals one, and one over one is full power. If we move to two feet, two times two equals four, and one over four is one quarter power. If we start at one meter, one times one is still one, and one over one is still full power. And if you move to two meters, two times two is four, and one over four is still one quarter power. This is because of the relative nature of the light at each measurement point. The light at two feet is one quarter power relative to the light at one foot. The light at two feet 
wouldn't make any sense relative to the light at one meter because one meter is roughly three feet. So your unit of measurement has to be consistent, but in terms of using the inverse square law to calculate the power level at any given distance, it doesn't matter what unit of measurement you use as long as it's consistent. With the inverse square law, what we're learning is that light loses power as it travels over distance, and we can use the distance measurement to figure out what the power of light is at that distance. So at one foot, it's at full power. Two times two is four, and one over four is one quarter power. So if we move to three feet, that's three times three, which is nine, and one over nine is one ninth power. And then if we move to four, four times four is 16, and one over 16 is one sixteenth power. And then five times five is 25, and one over 25 is one twenty-fifth power. And we'll take it one more step and go to six. Six times six is 36, and one over 36 is one thirty-sixth power. Now, if we look at this on a chart, we can see a pattern starting to emerge here. From one foot to two feet, you lose two stops of light. Full power to one quarter power is a reduction of two full stops of light. But then when you move from two feet to three feet, one quarter power to one ninth power is just over one stop of light. And then you go to four feet and that's another stop. And then when we go from four feet to five feet, instead of losing a stop, we lose about a half a stop. And again, from five feet to six feet, we lose about a half a stop. So in the first foot, we lose two stops. Then in the next two feet, we lose two stops. Then in the next four feet, we lose two stops. What we're learning here is that as light travels away from its source, at very near distances, it loses power very quickly. And as it travels farther and farther away, it maintains its illuminating power for longer and longer. Now, why does this matter to us? If we're going to manipulate light for our photography, we need to understand how that light is going to work in order to create the photograph we want to create. In this shot, Manic and Lisa is positioned one foot from the light source, which you can see here in this pullback shot of the entire setup. Now, for this shot, the ambient light is at zero power, which you can see from this shot right here, which is the first shot I took with no flash. The light I'm using in this setup is in a softbox, and the power level of the flash is set to 160 power. Manic and Lisa is one foot from the front of the soft box, which is the light source. And at one foot from the light source, Manic and Lisa is being illuminated by the full power of the light. Now, as the light moves across Manic and Lisa's face from one foot to two feet, the power drops off by two stops, which is part of the reason we have these dramatic and dark shadows on the left side of her face. In addition to that, the background behind her, which is the same background you see behind me, which is white. In this photograph, it is very, very dark. And one of the things that people struggle with that are new to flash photography is why when you take a photograph of somebody or something on a white backdrop, that backdrop doesn't show up as white. And the reason for that is the inverse square law. In this shot here, the backdrop is roughly five feet from the light. That means Manic and Lisa is being hit by light that is full power, but the backdrop is being hit by light at 1 25th power, which is four and a half stops darker than the light hitting her, which is why even though the backdrop behind her is white, it shows up as very, very dark because there's not enough power from the light illuminating it to make it look as bright as Manic and Lisa does. Now, I've been throwing a lot of numbers and a lot of math around. I know it can be overwhelming, but trust me, it's actually quite simple. Just remember to take the square of the distance, two feet times two feet, three three feet times three feet, four feet times four feet, etc. Take that, and then the inverse is the fraction. One sixteenth, one ninth, one quarter. Those are the power levels of the light at that distance. And that's going to help you understand how the light is going to illuminate anything that the light hits at that distance. Knowing that, we can use the inverse square law to help us build a shot and make it look a particular way. In this shot, when I took the photo, I knew that the backdrop was going to be very dark because I knew the power of the light would be reduced as it traveled farther from the light to the backdrop. In addition to that, I knew the left side of Lisa's face would be significantly darker than the right side due to the quick drop in power of the light as it traveled from one foot to two feet across her face, dropping two stops in power. Now compare that to this shot right here. In this shot, the light is still in the softbox, it's still in the same position, and it's at the same power level of 1 16th power. 
But Lisa is now five feet from the softbox. And when she's five feet from the softbox, that means that the light that is hitting her is now hitting her at 125th power. And that is roughly four and a half stops darker than it would be if she was right next to the light at one foot where she was in the previous shot. So when I took this shot, I knew that the light from the softbox would not be powerful enough to light up Lisa's face. If I want Lisa to be five feet from the light, but I want the exposure to be the same as if she was one foot from the light, I need to increase the power of the flash in the softbox. And I already mentioned that it was four and a half stops darker when she's five feet away. So if I know it's four and a half stops, I can increase my light by four and a half stops of power. Now when I'm at 1 16th power, I can only go up four stops because 1 16th is four stops less than full power. So I took the flash up to full power and then I took this shot right here. Now notice on this shot how the exposure of the light on the left side of Lisa's face is pretty much exactly the same as the shot when she was only one foot from the light. But notice how the shadows on the left side of her face are much brighter in this shot than it is compared to the first shot. And also notice how the backdrop is much brighter in the second shot when she's five feet away compared to when she was one foot from the light. All of this is happening because of the inverse square law. As the light moves across Lisa's face from five feet to six feet, it goes from 1 25th power to 1 36th power, which is roughly a half a stop drop in power. This results in shadows on the side of her face that are much brighter in relation to the light on the left side of her face compared to when she was at one foot from the light, where the power dropped two stops, resulting in much darker shadows on the side of her face. In addition to that, the backdrop, as I mentioned, is much lighter than it was in the first shot. And in both of these shots, the backdrop is about five feet from Lisa. But in the first shot, the backdrop is also five feet from the light, while Lisa is one foot from the light. That results in an almost five stop reduction in the power of the light hitting the backdrop compared to the power that is hitting Lisa. Now in this shot, the backdrop is about seven feet from the light and Lisa is about five feet from the light. The power of the light hits Lisa at 1 25th power with the backdrop seven feet from the light. Seven times seven is 49 and the inverse of 49 is 1 49th power. 1 25th to 1 49th is about one stop. So in this case, the backdrop is three and a half stops brighter than it was when Lisa was one foot from the light because of the inverse square law. And because of the inverse square law, I knew when I took this second photo that the backdrop would be lit and it would be much brighter in this shot than it was in the first shot. Knowing how the inverse square law works allowed me to create two dramatically different photographs just by changing the position of my subject in relationship to the light. It also lets me know that I can create a black background for a photograph almost anywhere I want to as long as I can position my light source very close to my subject and have the background, whatever it might be, be very far away from my light source. Because the farther the background is from the light source, the more that power is going to drop off, allowing the background to be almost completely black where my subject is lit by the full power of the light I'm shooting with. It also lets me know that if my subject is five feet from my light, I need to increase my light four and a half stops in power in order to hit her at full power. Or if I want to reduce the power of my flash beyond the settings available on my flash, I can move the light farther away from my subject, which will decrease the power of the light compared to the subject. And on the opposite end, if I want to increase the power of the light beyond the settings that are available, I can move that light closer to my subject, which will increase the power of it in relationship to the subject. Now I know this can be a little confusing, but the key is that the inverse square law simply tells us that the light loses power as it travels over a distance. And there are two main things to remember in order to use the inverse square law in your favor. The first is the math, which is squaring the distance. Four times four is 16, and take the inverse of that, 1 16th, to give you the power level at any distance you measure. 
And when you do the math, you should use a consistent measurement. Use one foot, use one meter, whatever measurement makes sense to you, use that measurement and always be consistent. The second thing to remember is that different light modifiers will have an impact on how the inverse square law impacts your light. As an example, with a snoot on a light source, the snoot tightly focuses a light beam, which actually increases the intensity of that light. In doing so, the light is not going to fall off in power as quickly as, say, a soft box, which does not tightly focus that light beam in. So you're going to want to spend a little bit of time with your different light modifiers and see how they work with the inverse square law. And it's pretty easy to do. Just set up your light with your modifier and set up your subject at one foot or one meter away and take a shot and then move the subject another foot away to two feet or two meters and take another shot. And do that successively and you'll be able to see how the light changes with that light modifier. Once you get a feel for your equipment, you're going to be able to use the inverse square law to your advantage to create and build shots. All right, that's all I've got for you guys this week. I hope you enjoyed this video on the inverse square law. And if you have any questions on it, let me know down in the comments below. And while you're down there, let me know, have you been using the inverse square law in your photography? Now, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. If you really like this video, why don't you do me a favor and share it with your friends? But you know what? It doesn't matter what you do. You better get out there and take some damn photos, and I'll see you next week. It may be square, but that doesn't mean it's not hip, and I'm a total dork.